around 33 million years ago in what is now central Mongolia, a mighty mammal roamed across the desert basin in search of food. Paraceratherium was one of the largest land mammals to ever walk the earth. Some scientists even consider it to be within the upper size limit that mammals can get to. In this video, we will learn more about this magnificent animal, from its evolution to its bizarre anatomy and how it ultimately became extinct. Enjoy! The first fossils of Paraceratherium were discovered in 1846 in what is now Pakistan. Since then, more fossils of these animals have been found all across Asia. While a full skeleton has never been found, these additional fossils helped scientists better picture what the animal was like. From the anatomy of its feet, scientists were able to identify Paraceratherium as a perissodactyl, an odd-toed ungulate that stood on three toes. Perissodactyls include animals like horses, tapirs, and modern-day rhinos. Despite its humongous size and almost alien appearance, Paraceratherium was actually a type of rhinoceros. At first glance, Paraceratherium is not what most would recognize as an extinct rhino. Species like the woolly rhinoceros are more in line with what we expect these animals to look like, with their stockier, shorter builds and their signature keratin horns. However, both Paraceratherium and the woolly rhino share a lot in common with each other and their modern-day relatives. Rhinos are identified not by their horns, but by their distinctively shaped molars. Like in other rhino species, Paraceratherium's upper molars have a curved pattern for the chewing surface, and the lower molars have an L-shaped pattern. Unlike most rhinos, however, Paraceratherium had an elongated neck and thick, pillar-like legs to support its body. The proportions of these legs were quite unique for large animals. Large sauropod dinosaurs and elephants had longer humerus and femur bones, while their forelimbs, hindlimbs, and feet were shorter and more compressed. Paraceratherium's proportions were the opposite. Its humerus and femur were shorter, while its lower limb bones were longer. These limb proportions are what we see in other rhinos and perissodactyles as well. Rhinos are thought to have originated during the early to middle Eocene epoch. Animals like Hyracaeus eximius are considered to be the potential direct ancestors of modern tapirs and rhinos. These 1.5 meter long animals looked very similar to ancestral horses like Eohippus, but were anatomically different. It had the same characteristic teeth that Paraceratherium and modern day rhinos do, supporting its ancestral relationship to these animals. From this group of animals would come three families of rhinos, the family containing modern-day rhinos, the now-extinct Aminodonts, and the Paraceratherids. While early members of this group weren't very large, they were already showing signs of becoming tall, browsing animals. Jushia was about the size of a horse and lived during the late Eocene Epoch. This animal is even considered to be ancestral to Paraceratheridae as a whole. Though not as large as Paraceratherium, the two species shared many similarities. They both had relatively small heads supported by an elongated neck. Most notably, the teeth of Jusha show that it was a strict high browser, feeding on ferns and leaves from branches where most herbivorous mammals couldn't reach. Jusha lived in the dense tropical forest of what is now China, so its smaller size made more sense here. Jushia has never really been featured in any documentaries or other forms of mainstream paleo media, so it's wonderful to finally see it get some attention. Since its initial discovery, at least four species of Paraceratherium have been identified, two of which are featured in Prehistoric Kingdom along with Jushia. Paraceratherium bugtinse was the first species discovered and named, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Fossils of this animal were recovered from the Chitarwata Formation in Pakistan. These fossil beds show a rich diversity of ancient mammals. There was even a giant crocodile present here, known as Astorgosuchus. This 10-ton, 12-meter-long beast may have attacked weaker and smaller Paraceratherium that tried to cross large bodies of water. Along with Prehistoric Kingdom, this species was also featured in a 2018 French documentary series, Mysteries of the Lost Giants. Paraceratherium transsauralicum is the largest and most completely known species. 
It roamed the deserts, scrublands, and grasslands of Eocene Mongolia, and would have little to fear from other animals. Predators like Hyenodon may have posed a threat to younger Paraceratherium, but a full-grown adult would have been way too large to take on. This species was featured in the famous Walking with Beast documentary series, and it is what's most used in other paleo media. These giants reached up to 4 to 6 meters tall at the shoulder and nearly 7.5 meters long. Its elongated neck gave it a neck height of 8 to 9 meters. They are believed to have weighed a staggering 10 to 15 metric tons with a maximum weight of 20 metric tons. This range aligns with the predicted maximum weight that mammals can get to. Mammals are limited not by biomechanics, but by gestation. Larger placental land mammals like elephants have longer pregnancies. Longer pregnancies in turn require more resources for both the mother and the baby. African bush elephant pregnancies can last up to two years, and a Paraceratherium would have had to carry their offspring for a much longer period of time. And it's likely that Paraceratherium would have looked after their young for many years like modern elephants do today. By conducting mesoware studies and isotope analysis of the animal's teeth, scientists were able to confirm that Paraceratherium predominantly ate leaves. Like other perissodactyls, Paraceratherium would have been a hindgut fermenter, and it would not have been able to extract much nutrition from its food. Therefore, it would have to eat loads and loads of leaves in order to survive. Its 2 to 2.5 meter long neck would have made it easier for the animal to reach the best leaves of the tallest trees. Like modern rhinos, the skull shape of Paraceratherium shows that it would have had a prehensile, triangular upper lip that may have helped with stripping leaves. These animals also had two sets of tusks pointed at odd angles. The larger upper tusks pointed downwards, while the shorter lower ones pointed forwards. Originally, these tusks were thought to have helped with stripping bark. It is now believed that these tusks were sexually dimorphic, with the males having larger tusks. Being so tall and large had its advantages. A full-grown adult Paraceratherium would have no fear of predators and access to harder to reach food sources. And the animal was perfectly adapted to life as a large, high browser. However, their large size and specialization may have been what led to their demise. Towards the end of the Oligocene, Paraceratherium faced an unexpected threat, the arrival and spread of Gomphotheres from Africa. Gomphotheres were not considered direct competitors to Paraceratherium, as they had different food sources. However, Gomphotheres are thought to have drastically changed the habitats they entered. They would destroy trees and turn woodlands into grasslands, similar to what modern-day African bush elephants do today. As their habitat changed and the food sources became scarce, Paraceratherium populations would have been more vulnerable to other threats like climate change and diseases. And as the Miocene began, the nearly 11 million year reign of these giant hornless rhinos came to an end. In their place, elephants soon became the largest land mammals, and one may have even surpassed Paraceratherium. The titanic Paleoloxodon nomaticus is thought to have been even heavier than Paraceratherium at 20 metric tons and more. For now though, Paraceratherium still remains as the tallest land mammal to ever live. And while their extinction may be sad, the Paraceratherids left behind an incredible legacy, starting off as tiny creatures and gradually evolving into the tallest animals to walk the earth since the dinosaurs. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with others who might enjoy it as well. Be sure to follow Nature's Compendium on social media to stay up to date on all the latest projects. If you would like to help support the channel in making more animated science content about dinosaurs and other extinct animals, you can do so by pledging to our Patreon page. As always, thank you for watching.